Welcome to the August 2024 Las Vegas Real Estate Report. In this video, I'm going to cover the July Las Vegas key housing stats, talk about how inventory is starting to increase and what that means to you if you're considering buying or selling. Are home prices going to keep going up, go down, or are they going to flatten out? Is the interest rate going to decrease more? It's already been decreasing. We're in the mid sixes for a conventional loan. Is it going to go lower? We will know in about a month's time because hopefully the Fed is going to reduce the short-term interest rate. We're going to discuss what's happening with new home builders and all the opportunities if you're buying, selling, or investing here in the Las Vegas Valley. Hi, my name is Jan O'Brien, along with my co-team leader, Cosmo Marabi. Please follow or subscribe here on YouTube. We're over on TikTok, and you can find us at uh, Living Las Vegas Henderson on Instagram. We have a great team of experienced real estate professionals covering all parts of the Las Vegas Valley. Make sure you reach out to one of them. If they sent this video to you, we're here for all your real estate area needs in the Valley. All right, let's dive right into the numbers. And yes, we increased yet again to 480,000 for a median sales price for single family homes. That was up 6.7 year over year. And it was only 2000 off from tying the historical high that we had in May of 2022. We also had 2145 units sold. That's up 5.1% year over year. Check out the new listings year over year, up almost 26% at 2962. And units available, which simply means how many homes were available July 31st when they pulled this data at the Las Vegas Realtors. 31.5% up, 4634. That means how many homes were still available on the market on that date, July 31st. Giving us about a 2.2 months of effective inventory, effective availability. That's up also 25%, which just means that if the, the amount of demand coupled with what was on the market stayed the same, it would take 2.2 uh, months for all the inventory to actually be sold. Of course, it's dynamic and that uh, doesn't happen that way, but that just is an indicator of what's happening in the market. I always like to show this chart of where we've come and I wanted, and I have it in another view here, but I just want you to be able to see we where we started out in 23 at 425 and we have been steadily increasing all of 24, starting out at 445, uh, 445,000 for the median sales price. Again, I'm only reporting for this video's purposes, only single family homes, all the way up to 480. You can see that's positive increases. Uh, new listings have, have moved up a little bit. We had a little increase in May and it's traditional for to see some slowdown uh, with activity. And we definitely saw that through July and part of August. But new listings uh, and also the availability, that has definitely been creeping up. And it's just because the interest rates have been high, they started coming down in the last you know, two or three weeks, and it takes a minute for everything to catch up and for people to start reacting to it. Plus, we have been in the hot months here, continuing to be in the hot months here in Las Vegas. Uh, we had school just go back in session. And so it's typical that we see a bit of a slowdown in uh, parts of July and August, people taking vacations and so forth. Here's that data displayed in a chart, which is a lot more visual. You can see how we flattened out the first, the first three months of the year. And I want to bring your attention to where we were this time last year. Uh, and reporting on July numbers, which was high, we saw a dip last year and then it kind of flattened out. And that's what we're wondering is what's going to happen so far as we look at the data through almost uh, two and a half weeks as I record this for August. The data is showing that we're right at 480. We have to get the rest of the closings for this month to know. So follow us here on the channel. About the middle of the month, we'll we'll be able to have all the data to put out the new video for in September for the August numbers. Our prediction is it's going to not go up. It may stay pretty flat here. Maybe we'll see a similar pattern and it'll flatten out for the rest of the year, perhaps even dip down a little bit. We will see. We don't have a crystal ball. We're just following the numbers to see, which brings us to interest rates. Yes, finally. Uh, and this is just back to give you the data from the last two years. But let's take a look as a snapshot as of uh, recording this on the 19th of August. We had the fixed conventional at 6.53, and this is with no points. We get this data from Mortgage News Daily. 
that's a daily survey they do of lenders across the country and then put this data out for anyone who wants to look at it, mortgagenewsdaily.com. And that is interest rates across the spectrum with zero points to, you know, obviously can buy the interest rate down and go lower. And the FHA is usually about a half a point off. And so you can see we're right at six for FHA and VA. That has started to get more people off the sidelines, but not in massive numbers yet. I think a lot of people are waiting to see what's going to continue to happen with rates. And we have, of course, a presidential election. And a lot of people like to wait and see what happens with that as well. Uh, as we move into the fall, we'll see. If the rates continue to come down, our prediction is more people that have had this pent-up demand waiting for a year, maybe even two years, sellers and buyers, are most likely going to jump into the market. And the big issue is going to be what's up with inventory. Are there going to be enough sellers that put their homes on the market to be able to handle the demand that might increase as we move into the fall and even the early winter months? with a lot of demand. If the rates, definitely if the rates drop down in the sixes for conventional and we get into the fives, we personally feel, and talking to a lot of people who are waiting, that's what they're waiting for. And when we have that interesting phenomenon of a lot of people jumping back into the market, including potentially investors, really depends on how much inventory is. Prices aren't necessarily gonna go down if there's not enough inventory because of a high demand, it's just economics and supply and demand, prices will go up. If we get enough inventory and the right amount of people jumping back in, we may see uh, prices stay flat or actually decrease. And again, just watching the news, a lot of speculation, a lot of telegraphing, the uh, Jerome Powell, they have a meeting this week and generally they will telegraph a little bit or investors like to jump in and, and decide what they're gonna do. And the mortgage industry does the same. They usually will, make the changes before the September 17th is the next Fed meeting, where most people, 90% plus, are thinking there's going to be a Fed rate cut for the short-term short interest rate, anywhere from 25 to 50 basis points. We'll see what happens and report on that next month. So what's happening with the builders? Well, interestingly enough, it slowed down a couple months ago when we did not see this big of the incentives that were happening. And I think in talking to builders and sales agents, they really had a slowdown through July and the first part of August. It's still a little bit slow, but they're starting to, as we can see, because of the incentives that we started seeing pop up in the last couple of weeks. Like a 3 2 one buy down, here is a company, uh, this is actually Pulte Homes, I believe, that is doing 1.99%. Now, the APR is based on the uh, all the cost of the loan, and it's based on this 4.99 uh, blended version of this uh, buy down. But for one year, 1.99, then 299, 399, and then year four through 30, you're fixed at 499. Not a bad deal, especially if the builder is covering the cost of that for you and you're not coming out of pocket because 499 is a great fixed interest rate. I don't know when we're going to get to five again. It's certainly going to take a year plus for that to happen and a lot of events to line up with the economy, with inflation continuing to come down from that 2.9 or where it is about right now to the two. Okay. So we're seeing things like four and a half, four and a half fixed. We're seeing a lot of incentives in the majority of the builders who are offering, they always offer incentives if you work with their in-house lender. Sometimes it's a selection of lenders. So they'll cover things like your closing costs, offer special financing. In some cases with builders, three or four builders that have a lot of inventory that's sitting there, as many of them come to their fiscal year, uh, some of that is now in, in September, others are uh, end of the year, there is a push to get those properties sold. That's where there's opportunities if you're in the market to buy a new home. Now, not all builders are building a lot of inventory. Some builders are continuing to do the build steadily, release a few lots and create a waiting list, which allows them to control the inventory and control the pricing. There are a lot of opportunities. There's over 225 new home communities and some 20, this is just the top builders right here, but there's about 25 builders of national size and uh, down to smaller builders, buildings throughout the valley. So those are good signs. They wouldn't be building homes if they, and buying up more land and releasing uh, the new products every month, we get new openings of new homes. We definitely are new home experts here 
uh, on our team. So definitely reach out. We can we can let you know where the deals are and represent you uh, out and take care of uh, representing you and negotiating on your behalf. All right. So those buyer opportunities continue to be some new homes <clears throat> on the resale side. The inventory is increasing, which means if you've been looking, you may see some more properties that you weren't seeing a month or so ago. We continue to see all year homes sit on the market longer that need updating. And there definitely are a lot of homes right now, as I record this, that are maybe you know 15 to 30 years old in great locations around the valley. They just haven't been updated and the sellers are trying to get those prices that the market will bear, but there is always a range in prices and it depends on the, what your home's gonna sell for. And it really depends on the condition, the location and so forth. Uh, definitely gonna be more competition as I just mentioned for resale and new homes when the rates come down even further, whatever it's gonna take to spark more people jumping into the sidelines. We'll definitely see more multiple offers and the leverage might shift back to sellers if there's not enough inventory, okay? So that's what's the unknown. Uh, and I just mentioned what's happening with the new builds. Now, if you're on the seller side, I think we're in a sweet spot. I've been saying that uh, for the last couple of months and I'm gonna continue to say it because we haven't seen a drastic shift in the inventory. It's trickling up as I put this chart back up here. This is where the new listings are and what the available. So just kind of look at that. If this continues to tick up, then it's an indicator that more homes are, and we have to look at the listing column as well, which is corresponding. So if this number increases and this number increases, it simply means there's not enough people write, uh, writing offers and homes going under contract and ultimately closing 30 to 60 days later. So if we continue to see inventory increase, and not enough people jump into the market, then there will be opportunities. If now is the time that you're thinking about putting your home on the market, the, to getting the best possible price and negotiating a good deal, and then having the opportunity to go buy when you can still perhaps negotiate a better deal, which is what we're really good at doing. And we'd love to help you with being able to do that. We're helping several people right now doing that exact thing, selling their home here or out of state, while we're negotiating and looking for a home for them and maybe even make a contingency. And I think you're gonna have those opportunities for the next couple months. And you definitely don't necessarily, if that's your goal that you need to sell and buy, don't wait too long because on the one side, if you wait until there's a lot of activity and sellers are getting multiple offers, remember, if you're gonna sell and then buy, you might get a little bit more on the sales side of your house, but now you gotta take that hat off put the buyer hat on, jump into a pool of a bunch of people writing multiple offers. And so you have to kind of uh, analyze that and that's what we can help you with as well. So with that, thank you for watching. This has been the August update for the July numbers. I hope to see you back here next month where we'll report on hopefully some better news with interest rates after we see what happens at the Fed meeting in September 17th. Thank you for watching.